Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are welcome. Welcome you all this evening. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And welcome you all via us now to the RCCG Covenant House Aman for our Sunday school tonight's teaching, for which I will be taking you on lesson five, which talk about commitment. So I want you to please be ready to hook up with us online to join us, to hook up and let's go through the teachings together this evening. I want you to also invite all our viewers online to also join us as we fellowship together, as we go before God in our Sunday school teaching this evening. And I pray that every one of us that will be here tonight, God will visit us and will bless us in an amazing way in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are not going to return the same way after tonight's teaching in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. So I want us to please bow down our head for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for this opportunity, this privilege to gather together before you tonight. Mm. To learn at your feet once again in this Sunday school teaching. Father, we ask, Lord, as we descend, we ask that you are sent through us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask for the infilling of your spirits. The Lord let your Holy Spirit take charge, take control of tonight's teaching in the name of Jesus. Amen. Both the speaker and the hearer of your word, Father, we pray that we shall be blessed in your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. And after tonight's teaching, grace to be the doer of your word. Give unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We are looking at the topic before us this evening for our Sunday school called commitments. Commitment is what we shall be looking at this evening with our limited time that we have. And the memory verse is being taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. So I want us to please be attentive and let's read together as we look at the memory verse together this evening. The Bible says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, be unmovable, be unshakable, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That Bible passage is simply telling us that God does not owe any man. It's telling us that God is a paymaster. There is no one that serves God that becomes starved in life. When you serve God wholeheartedly, automatically God is bound to commit it to everything that belongs unto you. You cannot be committed to God and God not be committed good things into your lives and into your destiny. And that is why the teaching we are looking at tonight we begin to bring a significant changes in your life from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please understand that commitment is very key for everyone in life. Commitment is a necessity for every one of us that want to become great in the things of the kingdom and in the world. So as a child of God, we are meant to be committed. Now, what do we mean by commitment? Let's look at the introduction. Given to us, our Bible passage tonight is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 to 14. Let's look at what this introduction passage given to us. Commitment means being bound to a cause or action or to another person or persons. Being bound to a cause of action or to another person or persons. There are numerous references in the Bible addressing the Christian commitment in various aspects of life. To our families, our neighbors, employers, the church, our health, and all things we do or say. That means the, the Bible makes us to know that all these things is very, very essential for us. But the Bible also teaches that the chief commitment of our lives is to God himself. The 
chief, the, the teachers, uh, chief, the chief commitments of our lives is commitment unto God. Brethren, God wants you and I to be committed unto him. God wants you and I to be more devoted unto him than the way we have been devoted to him before. Commitment is a very key to your greatness in life. God is only committed to what you committed unto him. And that is why it made us to realize and to know that in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, he said, I am the Lord and I change it not. I am the Lord and I change it not. Looking at the Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 38. Let's look at what the Bible tells us there. In Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 38. There. What does the Bible say there? The scripture is making us to realize, telling us something about commitment here. Telling us that how we need to be get more committed and be devoted more unto God. So that is the reason why you and I need to take this teaching serious tonight. It is not a time to begin to take your spirituality casual. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 38. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with thy soul and with all thy mind. So this is what God is saying to us. He told us in Malachi 3, 6 that I am the Lord God, I change not. That means God cannot give instruction and withdraw from his instruction. He does not change his plan. His plans to you and I is for us to be devoted to him and be committed to him. And when we committed to him, is get committed to everything that pertains unto us. And as we get committed to God and to his kingdom from tonight, God will begin to commit himself to all that pertains unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that pertains to you in lives and in living will begin to experience a supernatural turnaround in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said in Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 that I am still the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. God is the God. He changes not. He said I am the one yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he's telling us that what if you can get committed to me, I will automatically be more committed unto you. So that is the reason why I want you to please know that commitment to God is very, very important for us in lives as a believer. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. That is the scriptures I also want us to look at tonight. It said, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. Why are you anxious for everything, for things in life? Why are you eager, desperate, you want to get everything in life? The scripture is telling us here that be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. That means God wants us to be committed unto him. He wants us to be more devoted to him and to his, to his kingdom. And that is why I know that tonight's teaching is meant for someone who has been thinking, I still continue serving God? Does it really pay me to serve God? What are my benefits in serving God? Am I really gaining things in, the, in serving God? What are the things that God have in stock for me if I begin to serve him? Does, is, has God forgotten me? Because I see some people asking some questions and ask God questions. I, excuse me, Lord, I have a question. Why am I going through these challenges of life? Why are the things like this for me? Why am I not at the position or at the realm that I'm supposed to be? So they began to ask God questions, but God is saying that you and I need to be more committed unto him, that we must be more devoted to him. And as we get devoted to God from tonight, God will begin to answer us speedily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'd like us to look, move fast and move straight to our outlines. Tonight, we shall be looking at the two outlines here that talk by biblical instances of commitments and signs and cost of commitment. We are looking at biblical instances and looking at the sign and cost of commitment. Biblical instances 
Here there are several instances of commitment in the Bible. Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son, Isaac, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2 to 3. You will notice here that the Abraham, God gave him instruction. Ask him, call him, Abraham, arise, take your son, your beloved son, and take him to this. God gave him a specification. He described unto him and asked him where to take him to. That is in need of his son. Abraham, hearkening unto God's voice, he get up immediately and decide to take the step that God want him to take about that. That means that there is a test for every testimonies in life. That is to let us know that God will take, give us some specific instruction as regards to check our loyalty, our commitment to him, so that he can know and understand if truly we are committed to him or our heart is committed to something else. So God wants us to be more committed to him and to the things of the kingdom. And that is why we are looking at this other man. Another man that also get committed to the kingdom is David in the Bible. David's men risk their lives to get water for their masters. That one is being seen in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 15 to 17. When you look at this scripture, you will notice that everything about them, they commit it into God. They risk their life. They leave everything for them to follow after God. There is no one that follow God that suffer in life. There is no one that go after God that will not get gold eventually. David was a man of passion. David was a man that is so much addicted to the things of God that he released everything. What matters to him is all about the passion for the things of God. It's about the passion to the things of the kingdom. And that is why I want to please admonish you tonight that please don't envy any man at the top. Never envy any man that you see at the top. Before you envy them, please check their story. There is always a story behind every glory. No one that gets to the top that gets there alone. There is a price to pay. One of the prices that you are going to pay on your way to the top is the price of commitment. Being committed to the things of God. And that is why I know as you begin to get committed tonight, from tonight, God will begin to elevate you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> God will begin to lift you high in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ruth was another person in the Bible who was addicted, who was who get committed also to the things of God. Ruth stayed with Naomi during the hard time. In Ruth chapter 1, verses 11 to 18. Go through that teaching, go through the stories. You will discover that Ruth was a woman who made up her mind that come what may, I will not go, I will not quit. Brethren, are you at the point whereby you are thinking of quitting? Are you looking at that job, looking at what you are doing, your business, as if it's not fetching you what you expect it to fetch you? Why thinking of suicide? Why thinking about, ha, I think I need to withdraw from now. What, what's the essence of me serving God? God is speaking to you tonight. Please don't quit. If you don't quit, he's saying to you tonight that he's going to visit you. He's saying to you tonight, he's going to change your story. He's saying to you tonight that he's going to turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. So please and please, don't think of quitting. Don't think of going back. Don't think of stopping going to church. Don't think of stopping fellowshipping with the people of God. Don't think of reading your Bible. Don't think of quitting reading your Bible. Please, this is not the time to quit. This is the time to be more focused and be more committed to the things of God. There was a woman that I loved so much that spoke when God, when she was alive, God uses her. And the woman's name is called Katrin Kuma. Katrin Kuma said something. And she said, heavenly treasures are not free. That when you locate the treasures, then you become precious in life. So you need to understand this, that nothing good comes cheap. You must be committed to the things of God before you begin to experience the blessings of God. And God will begin to bless you in the name of Jesus. Another woman in the Bible that I want us to look at is Esther. Esther was committed to saving the Jews from destruction. She was committed to saving the Jews from destruction. Esther chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. In the book of Esther chapter 4, verse 15 to 16, we discover that Esther did not leave things for herself alone. 
Esther decided and decided to organize three days fasting and prayer. She asked and said, no, let's gather together and pray for the salvation of the Jews. That is high time that we decided to fast and to pray in, for the salvation of the Jews. That you need to rise up and pray. And when she prayed and God turned things around, when she prayed, God intervened. So please and please, you need to understand this, that there is a price of commitment that you and I need to pay if truly we want to see God in a new way. If truly we want to see God in a new dimension, in every aspect of our lives. And as you begin to seek God, as you begin to get committed to God, to the things of God, to the things of the kingdom, God will begin to meet you at the very point of your needs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we please look at that book of Esther and see what as the scripture tells us there? I want us to read it out, to read it and learn from Esther there and see what she did. Esther chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. What does the scripture say there? The scripture tells us that then Esther bade them return. Mordecai, this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or, not, or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Look at that statement that Esther made there. That if I perish, I perish. Is She made up her mind that she's going to engage in fasting. She's not just telling them to go. She's not just telling them to go ahead. She made up her mind that she is also going to fast with them so that you, they can see. And she said that if I perish, I perish. Brethren, you need to understand this, that until you pass the test, you don't have the testimony. There is always a trial before you triumph in life. Everyone in life will face one challenges or the other. So you must understand this, that Esther made up her mind and said that she will stand for the salvation of the Jews. So we need to be committed more to the things of God in this end time. And let's quickly look at this one also. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were resolute in their faith, even in the face of threats to their lives. At the point of death, we all are all familiar with this story. We all understand this story very well in the Bible. And at this point, they were at the point of no return. It's either they agreed or not. The king said to them that except they bow to his own God, that is the only way that they can be escaped. But these men made up their mind. These men decided that come what may, we are not going to bow. They made up their mind that they are not going to give in to what the king's request. The king's request. They made up their mind that come what may, they said it that no, if our God be God, he will save us. And if he chooses not to save us, we is, is still our God. It does not change. That means at this point, God is saying to you and I that if you refuse to bow, you will not bow. He's telling us here, at that particular point, that come what may, that if you are not going to bow for that bow, if you are not going to bow for that high door, if you are not going to bow, if you are not going to compromise, if you are going to stand your faith and stand your ground and remain and take me as the Lord your God, that then your salvation is very near. And I see God changing your situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see God turning things around for you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is someone here tonight listening and watching this video live. I know for sure that you have been explaining what you have been passing through facing before now, that you are even tired of even saying it out. But God is saying to you this night that surely there is an end to every expectation and that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. An end is coming to that trial for you tonight in the name of Jesus. An end is coming to that challenges for you tonight in the name of Jesus. Please have hope in God. God never fails anyone in life. God never disappoints anyone in life. Verse 15 said that he, he made us to understand that anybody turning himself to be God over your life, God is saying that he's going to cause them to be consumed by fire tonight in the name of Jesus. So please understand this, that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were resolute in their faith. They never give up. And at the end, victory becomes their portion. Paul also was ready to spend and spent for the cause of the gospel. Oh, I love this man so much, Apostle Paul. 
Brother Paul, as we always call him, he was a man that was faced with different persecution, faced with different challenges, faced with different confrontations, faced with different oppositions, but yes, he stood his ground. Yet he stood his ground. He believed in the Lord God that he has received, that he has accepted. He believed in the Lord God that God is there for him to save him. He knows for sure that God is never leave anyone. He knows for sure that God Almighty is the God that answered by fire. So if you and I will be resolute in our faith unto God, if we are not going to bow, if we are not going to compromise, if we are not going, if we are still going to be steadfast about the things of God, about the things of the kingdom, then testimonies is coming your way. Then wonders is coming your way. They, you might have been mocked before. You might have been ridiculed before, before, but I have good news for you. Before this month of October comes to an end, God will turn your situations around in the name of Jesus. Don't forget the Bible says that when the Lord turned around the captivities of Zion, that they were like men that were dreamed. They were all filled with laughter and with joy, saying that great, this God has done these great things unto me. In this month of October, you shall be the next to testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please and please be resolute in your faith with God. Another man that I will mention before we move to the size and cost of commitment is the man called David. David was a man that was committed to praising God. David was a man that was addicted to serving God. David was a man that has given everything unto God. Hear me, brethren, people of God. When your heart is fixed for God, God will fix everything for you. Amen. When your heart is made up and is fixed for God, God will automatically fix everything for you. And I see God fixing things around for you this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever your situations might be, whatever challenges, whatever the earth issues you might be facing now, be going through now in your business, in your career, in the lives of your children, in the lives of your daughter. God is going to perfect that for you this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please understand this in Psalm 57. What does the scripture say about David there in Psalm 57? This was a man who made up his heart to build a house for God. This was a man who made up his, of his mind. He said that I will not live in my own house except I am ensure that I first build a house for God. In Psalm 57, verse 7, what does the scripture say there? As we look at it together, in Psalm 57, verse 7, the Bible said that my heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. My heart is fixed. Don't forget, when your heart is fixed for God, God fix everything for you. So please, is your heart fixed for God? That's the question you and I need to ask ourselves. Is your heart fixed for God? Are you still doubting God? Do you still believe that? Do you still think that no, the prayers cannot be answered in God? Do you still believe that calling on the name Jesus will not deliver to you what you are expecting God to do for you? Please, I have this for you. Time will fail me to begin to testify of the Lord's goodness. I am an embodiment of testimonies of when your heart is fixed for God. When men are forsaking you, when they have cast you down, when they thought you can never become anything in life, God is your backbone. And when God becomes your backbone, you can never suffer paralysis. And I see God changing your story in the name of Jesus. I see God changing your story today in the name of Jesus. So please and please let your heart be fixed for God. Let your heart be fixed for God. Made up your mind and let your heart be fixed for God. Don't forget what the scripture says concerning Joshua. In Joshua 24 verse 15, the scripture was telling us that if it seems evil unto you for you to serve, for you to belong unto God, say choose you these days whom you are going to serve. Whether you want to serve God, the living God, or you want to serve the mammal. So he's telling us here that come what may it pays to serve God. When you serve God, God satisfies all your needs. When you serve God, when your heart is committed to God, it meets you at the very point of your needs. And I see God taking you to your next level in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's quickly move forward as we look at the signs and cost of commitment. Signs and cost of commitment. Looking at the book like in our hands, that we are teaching guide tonight. If we see it there that we are looking at the signs and commitments. Commitment comes out of love, out of gratitude and passion. Here it was said to us that commitment comes out of love, 
out of gratitude and passion. And here are some signs of commitment. What are the signs and the cost of commitment? What will it cost you when you get committed to God? When you are addicted to God, what are the things? Number one is that the willingness to obey wholeheartedly and surrender to the leadership of Jesus. Willingness to obey and wholeheartedly surrender to the leadership of Jesus Christ. Let's look at what Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 tells us. Matthew Matthew 16, 24 to 25. Yes, ma'am. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Okay. If any man will come after me, mm. let him deny himself mm. and take up his cross yes. and follow me. Hallelujah. For whosoever will save his life mm. shall lose it. Hallelujah. And whosoever will lose his life mm. for my sake shall find it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at that statement of the scripture. For whosoever that will save his life we surely, what? We lose it. But whosoever that we decided to lose his life, for my sake, we should, we do what? We surely find it at the end. We receive it at the end. God is saying to us here, people of God, that you need to be more committed unto him. Hear me, people of God, if you are too big to follow, then you are too small to lead. If you will be too big to follow God, then you will be too small to lead. God is looking for who for whom we release everything about him to serve him. God is looking for, every, for, for the person that will surrender everything to him and to his kingdom, to follow him to the letter, so that at the end he can gain it, so that he can receive the crown. God is looking for, so if you are too big to follow, then you are too, or too small to lead. God cannot use you when you are too full of yourself. God cannot make use of you when you are too full of yourself, when you see yourself as being full. You need to empty yourself before God. You need to surrender yourself before God so that you can be a vessel of honor unto him. And I see someone listen to my voice tonight that the height that you thought you would never get to because you are willing, you have decided to be committed to God. God will take you beyond that height in the name of Jesus. I say God will take you beyond that height in the name of Jesus. I want you to understand these people of God in this scripture the bible made us to understand that for every elijah there is elijah elijah has to follow elijah for him to become great in life so and also for every timothy there is also paul so that must you must be willing be ready to follow you must be you must have a leader you must have someone ahead of you who is your pastor who is the man that is that is giving you instruction? Who is the man that will tell you, come here and you come immediately? Who is that man that will call you, sit down here and you sit immediately? So you need to understand this, that for every Joshua, there is also Moses. And understand that for every Oyedepo, there is Enoch Adejari. So also, you must understand this. Pastor Adebo is there. So you need to know these people of God, that his willingness to obey all utterly surrender to the leadership of Jesus Christ is number one cost of commitment. Let's move fast because of our time. Number two is what? Willingness to give sacrificially. Willingness to give sacrificially. You must understand this and know these people of God that nothing comes easy in life. Everything in life comes with a price tag. Everything good come with, every, come with a price tag. There is always a price for every rice. And I want you to understand this, that it's a willingness to give sacrificially. Giving sacrificially is one of the cost of commitment that you and I need to know and you and I need to want to pay the price. As we are going to be looking at the scripture in Genesis chapter 22, verses 2 to 3, and also verse 9 to 10, which tells us about the instruction God gave to Abraham about his son. We are going to read that scripture and we are going to look at it. But I want you to understand this and take it this very serious. That until you lay it down, you don't pick it up in life. You must be ready to lay it down first before you can pick it up. In the kingdom, nothing good comes cheap. So there is a reason, there is a price that you need to pay. You must be ready to give sacrificially. Why? Because if it is not painful, it can never be gainful. So you need to understand this. Then let's look at that scripture. What does the scripture tell us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3? First, 
before we move to verse 9 and 10. 22, 2 and 3. Yes, ma'am. And he said, Take now thy son, okay. thine only son Isaac, okay. whom thou lovest, oh, yes. and get thee into the land of Moriah, mm. and offer him there for a burnt offering mm. upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Okay, hallelujah. And Abraham rose up early in the morning mm. and saddled his ass. Mm. And took two of his young men with him, mm, friends, and Isaac his son, mm. and gave the wood for the burnt offering, hallelujah. and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Hallelujah. Now verses 9 and 10. Yes. Verse 9 says, And they came to the place which God had told him of, mm. and Abraham built an altar there, mm. and laid the wood in order. Uh -huh. and bound Isaac his son mm. and led him on the altar upon the wood. Mm. Verse 10 and the final. Okay, and Abraham stretched forth his hand mm. and took the knife to slay mm. his son. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. That was where the turnaround began in the lives of Abraham. God gave him instruction and he carried it out immediately. What are the instructions God given to you? Has God ever spoken to you? He tells you before to give willingly, to give sacrificially to the things of God, to sow into the lives of a man of God, to do something sacrificially. Please don't delay. Please don't waste time. Carry it out and watch what God will do in your life. Do it and see the testimonies that will follow. So as you begin to do this, God will begin to do the unusual in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say God will begin to do the unusual in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now number three, cost of commitment is willingness to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. Willingness to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. Willingness to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. You can't, there is nobody that will serve God in life that will not be stoned. Whenever, the moment you made up your mind that you want to serve God, you want to seek God, you want to be committed to the things of God, remember that they will, what? They will stone you. Remember people will castigate you. Remember people will throw stone at you. Your family members, your brethren, your friends, and everyone that around you, they will not understand you. Will ask, they, will, they will call you names. They will ask you questions. Ah, you want to serve God? This man is now carrying Bible. He's now preaching gospel. He's now doing this. He's now moving around for the sake of the gospel. Brethren, you need to understand this, that you must endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. What does the scripture say in that place? 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness okay. as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Therefore endure hardness, hardship as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means it is meant, it is there for us, it's a, it's, it's a thing that we have to come. You can't negotiate it. You can't pray for it. At a point in life, you will see some things will go, it seems, seems as if it's going rough. It will look as if things are a little bit difficult. Uh, or is a little bit hard. At that point in life, don't give up. At that point in time, don't give up. Don't complain. Don't rubbish what you have done for God. Don't say, God, after all, I've paid my tithe. After all, I've sacrificed so many things for the sake of the gospel. Why are things so hard for me? Why are things not working this way? Don't forget that God has, it has been spoken, that has been said to us that you must be willing what to, what to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. And as you begin to endure hardship, God will turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another point that we need to understand uh, under the cost of commitment is willingness to go extra miles or pay the ultimate price. Willingness to go extra mile or pay the ultimate price. What are the extra miles that you need to go through for the kingdom? You know the instruction God is giving unto you. God might be giving you an instruction that arise, go to Zarephath, like he spoke, he spoke to that woman, to the widow of Zarephath, he spoke to her there, to Elisha, concerning her. God might be telling you, no, arise, live where you are, and go to this place. Go and feed my people that are there, that are starved. Go and feel those people that are there, that are struggling. Look at that particular brother. Decide to look at him and clothe him, check some things about his life, ask him some questions. What are the challenges he's facing? Ask that woman, what are the hardships in her life that God can use you to solve? So you must be ready to go extra mile or pay the ultimate price to go about to propagate the gospel, to go about to spread the gospel, to go about witnessing Jesus Christ. 
as your Lord and Savior to the dying world, to the people out there. God is looking for whom to send if you are ready, if you are willing. God is ready to send you. So your question is, your own answer is just to say to him, yes, Lord, here are my, send me, Lord. That is what you need to ask to tell, to tell him, that, Lord, I am willing. So you must have that willingness in you to go extra mile for the sake of the gospel. And as you begin to do that, to witness for Christ, God will begin to turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nobody that will pay the price to serve God, to serve Christ, to witness for Christ, that will ever remain the same. God is a paymaster. God is a paymaster. He may not pay initially, but it will pay ultimately. He may not pay at the early stage, but he will pay eventually. Brethren, I want you to hold on tonight to God. I want you to please have faith in that God. If it seems as if you don't have that testimony yet, if it seems as if you are not having the results yet, you are looking at your friend, you are looking at that brother. After all, you go to church together. After all, you pray together, you fast stay together. But why is his own life better than my home? Why is his own life more colorful than my home? He's having, he's sharing the testimonies of a good job. He's sharing the testimonies of a new car. He's sharing of testimonies of building a house. God is saying to you tonight, please hold on. Wait for him, and you will not waste in life. You will testify in the name of Jesus. You will testify in the name of Jesus. Now, I also want you to know this, that one of the costs for the commitments that you need to pay is willingness to fellowship regularly with other Christians. Willingness to fellowship regularly with other Christians. Don't forget that the scripture, the Bible tells us that we must not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Let's look at what the Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 25. If you are there before me, please read it out. Let's Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 25. Yes. Hebrews 10, 25. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves mm. together mm. as the manner of some is, Hallelujah. but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a commandment, it's an instruction for us from God for us that we must not forsake the gathering of brethren. Don't forsake the fellowship of the brethren. Come together. Don't forget the Bible says we are two or three gathered together in my name that I am there in their midst. Don't forget that the scripture said that. And don't also forget what the Bible says also in Proverbs. I think verse 17 there about that iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friends. So if being together, fellowshipping with brethren is very important. So on a day like this, join us for a Sunday school teaching. On a service day also. Like tomorrow, join us for the service as we fellowship and worship God together. On our Bible study also, be there to worship God, to serve God. Be eager to want to serve God. Don't be forced to serve God. Don't be the one that will be called upon to come and devote your time or to devote your energy before you begin to serve God. Be willing to want to serve God. Be willing to pay the price to seek the face of God. To be in the fellowship with the brethren and begin to serve God. And as you begin to serve God, God will begin to reward you and God will begin to pay you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please understand this that you need to serve God. If it seems as if it's painful now, it will be gainful later. Amen. It might be painful at initial stage, but I have that assurance for you that it will be gainful for you at the end. God will reward you and God will pay you better than the way you think or you imagine. So please don't forsake the gathering of the brethren. And number seven, which is the last, but not the least, on the last but not the least here, says that willingness to spend quality time alone with God. Willingness to spend quality time alone with God. That means you and I must be willing, must be ready to spend quality time alone with God. You must have a time whereby you communicate with God, your maker. You must have a time whereby you just wake up, you just lock yourself up in a room and you begin to sing and you begin to praise God. Though it seems as if what you are praying to God for has never happened, it has not come, yet it's still God, it changed not. Burst into singing praises unto him, keep on thanking him and begin to sing unto him, unto the Lord be the glory, great things you have done. Unto the Lord be the glory, great things he will do. So begin to sing praises unto him and begin to thank him for what he has done, 
for what he's here to do. And as you begin to praise him and begin to worship him, God begin to come down and begin to look at you that this man has provoked me. This man has triggered me. This man has called for my attention. One thing that God cannot resist is the praise you offer unto him. Every time you pray to God, God sends an angel unto you. But every time you release and you offer praises unto him, God come down himself and say, come what me. I need to listen to this man's voice. I need to listen to this person's request. It is time for me to hearken unto him. Why? Because God loves praises. God wants to, David understand this as the key that God wants him to offer to him. And that is why he always praised God. He always loved to sing unto him and always loved to dance to, before God. Don't mind anyone that is mocking you now. They mock David as well. You remember the case story in the Bible. A woman who mocked the man that is enjoying God, that is serving God. What happened to her at the end? She was the only woman that became barren in the Bible. And I see you as you begin to praise God, as you begin to offer praises unto God. Everyone that have been doubting and mocking your God, saying, where is your God? Soon, very soon, by the grace of God, they will return and share your testimonies with you in the name of Jesus. They will return and rejoice with you in the name of Jesus. I said they will come and laugh with you in the name of Jesus. Don't forget if you have been mocked or you have been ridiculed. They mocked and ridiculed Anna in the Bible. So please, don't be ashamed to testify of the gospel. Dance before God. Spend quality time to worship God. Spend quality time in studying God's word. Spend quality time in praying to God. Have a schedule, a roster every day. That after your daily schedule, after your going out and coming in, this is the time for me to answer to worship God. This is the time to serve God. And as you begin to do that, it begins to satisfy your longing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So in conclusion tonight, I want you to please understand that the true cost of commitment to Christ is self-denial, cross-bearing, cross -bearing, and the continual following of him. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, furthermore, Jesus tells us that our commitment to him must, be, must supersede our commitment to even our family. That means the time that we have for him must go beyond the time that we spend we have for our family. You are on the street, you are going to be committed to God. Begin to sing unto him. Begin to speak in tongues unto him. Begin to pray to him. Let your heart be flow to him. Let your heart committed to him. Every time you are at your place of work, always seeking God. Always be there to work, to speak in tongues, to pray to him. So when your heart and everything about you supersede a family, He's saying that to us in Luke 14, verse 26 to 27, saying that those who cannot make that kind of commitment cannot be his disciples. That means for you and I to be his disciples truly, our heart must be totally committed unto him. And as you do this, God Almighty will begin to turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that after this encounter tonight, you will have reasons to testify in the name of Jesus. But let me say this, that in conclusion, as believers... Our slogan should be that for me to live is Christ. As it was stated and written in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. But don't forget this, that it is your longing that determines God's showing. It is your craving that determines his givings. And it is your hunger that determines what God will hand over to you. So when you made up your mind to be committed to him, God made up his mind to be committed to everything about you. It will not allow you to be sick. It will not allow you to be down. It will not allow you to be poor. It will not allow you to face that challenges for too long before it comes to your rescue. And I see God changing your story from tonight in the name of Jesus. I see someone that is under the sound of my voice tonight that whatever you are trusting God for, believing God for, that you have been asking God, God, when are you going to answer me? You are trusting God for baby. God is saying to me to tell you tonight that in nine months, your testimonies will arrive. You are believing God for a car. You are believing God for a home, for a house of your home, for God to divinely say to you. And I see God between before this end, end of this year, we shall rejoice with you in the name of Jesus. Your testimonies will begin to come in in an unusual way in the name of Jesus. Please be committed to serve to God. It pays to serve God. He pays to seek the face of God and watch what God will do for you. Please and please do this and bring your testimonies. It is your turn to testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 
Shall we pray this prayer and let's pray together this evening? I want you to please say to me, say with a loud voice to me, say, Father, Father as I have made up my mind, as I've made up my mind to, be committed to, your kingdom, to be committed to your kingdom, answer me speedily this year. Speedily. Everything that pertains unto me, let them begin to experience a supernatural turnaround. Open your mouth and turn into prayer. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. The Lord, as I begin to commit to you, myself to you, my work, everything about me, Lord, I pray King of glory, that let that be sporadic lifting. Let that be supernatural speed. Let that be things change of story for me and my family. Whatever that I've been longing for, believing you for, since the beginning of this year, that since it has not yet come, Lord, let it begin to come my way. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to testify. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, as I have made up my mind to be committed to you, help me not to go back again, O Lord. Help me not to return back, O Lord. Help me, O God, and uphold me to the end, O Lord. Open your mouth, O God, and begin to turn it to prayer. And then begin to pray to God that, Lord, as I decided to begin to serve you, as I begin to seek you, begin to seek your kingdom. O Father, Lord, I pray, King of glory, that nothing will take me away from your presence, Lord. Lord, I pray, King of glory, you all said that no man that lays his hand on the plow return back that is fitting for the kingdom. Father, I pray that I will not be cast away. Lord, nothing will take me away from your presence, O God. I pray, Father, Lord, as I begin to serve you, I pray, King of glory, that you uphold me to the hand, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, I want you to pray this prayer. Oh, Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, my God. Make me a vessel of honor. Make me a vessel of honor. Unto your kingdom, O God. Oh, open your mouth and turn it to prayer. Lift up your voice to God and pray that prayer. The Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, King of glory, Lord, make me, O oh Lord, and my household, Lord, a vessel of honor before you, Lord. I pray, Father, Lord, that I don't want to be a used and dumb vessel in your hand in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Someone is not praying that prayer now. I want you to open up and your mouth and pray that prayer. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mouth and pray that, Lord, I must be a vessel of honor before you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I pray that you uphold me to the end. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, when a kingdom shall come, Lord, I will be raptured with you, Lord. Use me to the glory of your holy name, O Lord. I won't be a used and dumb vessel in a hand in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Stretch forth your hand before me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for tonight's teaching. We bless you, O Lord, because you have not allowed your word to return back to us in vain, O Lord. We thank you for answering us speedily, Lord. As we have called upon you tonight, we ask that, Lord, you will answer us speedily in the name of Jesus. Amen. For everyone tonight, Lord, that have listened to this message and watched this video and is made up is our mind to be committed unto you. I pray, Father, the grace to seek your face, to seek you to the end, Father, give unto us in the name of Jesus. Pray, Lord, that when the trumpet shall sound, none of us shall be found missing in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, everlasting Father, you have made up your promise to us that when we are committed to you, you will be committed to us, Lord. Everything that pertains unto us, you know the area, the points there. We have been trusting you, believing you for one thing or the other. I pray, Father, Lord, that you meet us at the very points of our needs in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for someone here tonight that is asking that, oh God, when is it going to be my turn to testify? That after this teaching, I decree and declare that this new week, it shall be your turn to testify in the name of Jesus. Your testimonies begin to roll in in the name of Jesus. Where you have been ridiculed before, where you have been mocked before, God will turn you to an enviable personality there in the name of Jesus. Everyone that have laughed at you to scorn before, they will come and laugh with you in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Jesus,